good evening everyone it's about time now thank you for joining us in today's webinar it's our pleasure to uh, host all the panelists from the universities and also the students and parents from india so i'm vaishnavi thakur a phd student at the university of tokyo and i'll be your host for today's session assisting me as a sub facilitator is ms khushi javeri a student of keio university so coming to today's webinar uh, it focuses on studying and working in japan aiming to promote education in japan and inspire students to pursue higher studies here so this is organized by the university of tokyo india office uh, where we have invited experts from various universities across japan to provide valuable information and guidance on the programs offered at their institutions so as we know japan boasts the th world's third largest economy and the highest employment rate among the developed g7 nations uh, this makes it a great destination for skilled professionals but unfortunately we because of lack of awareness many students opt for western countries for their higher education so our goal is to bridge this gap and uh, remove all the misconceptions about studying and working in japan such as uh, language requirements tuition fees living expenses and so on and uh, to the, the webinar will describe the uh, admission process into the various universities here and if you have any queries so please post them in the q and a portal and our panelists and university representatives are here to assist you uh, now let's dive into the webinar i would like to invite uh, ms sakshi san the assistant manager of the university of tokyo india office to provide us a more details about today's webinar and the university of tokyo india office Thank you, Ms. Vashini, for the introduction. So, hello, everyone. Uh, welcome to this webinar study and uh, work in Japan session five. Right. Uh, my name is Sakshi Rai. So, first of all, uh, before giving you a brief introduction about the project, I would like to thank all of you. We are so glad that you have participated in our webinars. Thank you for supporting our online seminars by attending, and uh, to all our panelists, thank you for contributing into this webinar series. So, uh, because of your support and contribution, we have successfully contributed, uh, successfully completed uh, four series of this amazing study and work in Japan project for this year. And uh, there will be more uh, such series we have planned in future. So, uh, this webinar is hosted by uh, our office, the University of Tokyo India office, and brought to you by MEX, the Ministry of Education, Culture, Sports, Science, and Technology in Japan. So by means of all these sessions, our mission is to introduce Japanese universities to you and ask you to study and work in Japan. And about our office, we are the part of Study in Japan Global Network Project in Southwest Asia by MEXT. And we kind of provide information to all of the Japanese universities. And we also organize this uh, education fairs, seminars, and webinars throughout India. And uh, a little bit about this webinar series. So there will be uh, three to four different Japanese universities representing in each session, national, public, and private universities. And all the universities uh, will be, you know, basically introducing the English-based programs and uh, scholarship opportunities that are offered by them. So I must tell you that studying abroad in Japan means you'll further your study in a well-rounded education system, you'll experience a unique new culture, and you'll have a chance to gain more international perspective. However, however I know um, it would be difficult to understand everything in such a short period of time, like 20 minutes each university, but I would like to recommend all of you to please uh, note down the contact addresses of each university so that in case if you have any questions, uh, any doubts further, uh, please feel free to ask them uh, directly later on by writing them. So thank you very much for listening to me. Please stay tuned uh, with us till the end of the session. And please uh, don't forget to register uh, for our next webinar on 22nd July. We have a lot in store for you. So please register for all our sessions. I hope um, our webinars will help you to achieve your dreams of studying and working abroad in Japan. So thank you very much for listening to me. Uh, over to you, Ms. Akbar. Thank you, Sakshi. Thank you, Sakshi. Thank you, Sakshi. Thank you, Sakshi, for the uh, valuable words. I'm sure students are motivated uh, to join the universities here. Uh, let me share the agenda slide for today. So uh, here is the agenda slide. Uh, now we have presentation by Ms. Kushi Javeri, a student of Keio University. She's going to give a presentation about uh, her experience as studying in Japan. Um, Kushi san. Thank you very much for the introduction. Um, 
Um, I hope you can see my slide. Okay, um, so I'll start uh, right away. Um, good evening to all the panelists and attendees. I'm Kushi Javeri, and today I'll be talking about the study and work. So I'll start by giving a brief introduction about myself. I was raised in Tokyo, and I'm professional from India. Currently, in the Faculty of Environment and Information Systems. I am also a recipient of private scholarship from Kyoto University. And a recipient of I have good experience. Uh, I also have experience in this situation. So why should you choose Japan as your destination to pursue further study? Firstly, Japan is the third largest economy in the world with a population. 126 is a member of the G7 and G20. Japan ranks ninth in the global peace index, which is probably the same per time. There are a range of international cuisine uh, available and also culturally appropriate food, uh, which is available at within Japan. Health policies have also proved to be very beneficial to international students, as 70% um, of the cost. So, um, Japanese universities are categorized into national that are founded by the Japanese government. Public that are laid by local public entities and private that are funded by private organizations. 77% of the universities in Japan are private, but in terms of reputation, national, public, and private universities are equally well. In Japan, undergraduate programs are for four years, graduate for one or two, depending on the program you are applying for, and doctoral for three to your four years. English program in Japan uh, are well renowned as they provide a range of degree of four different types of other countries like Canada and besides professional growth, um, Japanese universities also focus personal growth as students also excel in extracurriculars and have the freedom to create or appreciate anything they wish to. Universities also provide services like career support and counseling facilities like libraries, gymnasium, and museums. So now I'll be talking about a very essential aspect um, for all of you. Um, I believe Japan is one of the most affordable countries to the studies as a patient for international students and domestic students. As you can infer from this chart, a tuition fee of private universities is expected. Most of the international students have provided financial assistance in the form of internal and external. I've also listed a couple of basic documents that most of the universities ask for during your application process. For more details, I recommend you check the application guidelines of the program you wish to enter. And uh, in order to apply for the master's or PhD programs, it is important for the applicant to contact the supervisor of the program for further admission assistance. The job opportunities in Japan are countless, and um, several benefits come along once you work for a company here. Graduates from Japanese universities usually tend to work for international companies. Now, recently, startups as well. Graduates, especially from a couple of graduates, the average salary after graduation is around 3.5 to 3, around 18 to 19 years. And Japan also has the lowest unemployment rate, which is 2.3%. Visa procurement is not a very difficult process. The student visa can be upgraded to visa if you're able to find a job in Japan after graduation. So um, the number of dispositions for employment purposes from international students has been escalating over the years. 2019 witnessed double the capacity of international students in 2017. There's a 50% increase in the number of students and professors coming from the US. This increase is primarily because of the wide job prospects and internships. Another very interesting and distinct feature of Japan is the opportunity to experience the use compared to other countries. Japan does not experience very harsh climates. You can experience different seasons in the country, like the famous, famous cherry blossoms in Japan, or the foliage in autumn. You can travel across the country and experience very climate. Um, so lastly, I talk a little about my student life 
in Japan. Um, from my personal experience, I can certainly say that my university has opened doors to several unexpected but more qualified students. You can see in this um, attending baseball events to participate in hackathons. Every experience has been unique. Um, also, students are supposed to join labs here, which is called the Kinky Project, which one gains hands-on experience in their field of interest and works on their research under the guidance of a professor uh, in the last two years of their undergraduate degree. To sum up, um, I highly recommend students to consider studying in Japan, as will certainly be a fruitful experience having to spend a lot on education. Um, and that brings me to the end of my presentation. I hope I've been able to give students and parents an insight to their study and work. And I look forward to meeting some of you. Thank you for your time. Thank you. Thank you, Kushi san, for giving us an overview of both studying in Japan. It was really interesting to see all the experiences you have gone through. Uh, I recommend all the students, if you have any general doubts or queries about studying here or coming to Japan, you can post them in the Q&A portal. Ms. Khushi would answer them. Uh, so let's move on to the next presentation. Before that, let me share my agenda slide. So moving on to the university presentations, where we have uh, the University of Aizu as our first presenter today. The University of Aizu is Japan's first university dedicated to computer science engineering. It's located in the Fukushima prefecture and offers undergraduate and graduate programs to approximately 1100 students. The university is renowned for its open access to computers, bilingual environment and international collaborations. In 2014, it was selected as one of the universities by the Japanese government, uh, as one of the top global universities by the Japanese government. So today we have with us Ms. Iga Rashi from the Student Affairs Division to give an introduction about the university and describe the admission process. Uh, you can start your presentation, Ms. Iga Rashi. May I start? Uh, yes, yes, yes. Okay. Okay, so first, can you hear my voice? Uh, yes, we can hear you. Uh, can you see your screen as well? Okay, can you see screen? Okay. Yes, yes. Thank you. Okay, so thank you for joining us as a today. I'm Inga Rashi in charge of admission. It is so happy to explain our university today. Let's get started. Okay. So here is a page in Japan. There are a total of almost 800 universities of three types, national, public, and private. The University of Aizu is one of the 94 public ones. And the next page is... Uh, the ACM, a professional organization for computer science and information professional list top 10 reasons to study computer science. We pick up some from the 10. Uh, one C is a part of everything we do. Computer technology a part of just about everything that touches our lives from the cars we drive to the movies we watch to the way business and government deal with us. Studying computer, uh, computing will provide you with valuable knowledge. And number two is CS offers many types of lecture careers. CS jobs are among the highest paid and have the highest job satisfaction. Number three, CS jobs are here to stay regardless of where you are located. And number four, future opportunities on computer are without boundaries. CS is one of those fields where it's almost impossible to predict what will happen next. 
this is why we cannot even begin to imagine all the way that you can make the contribution to it and it it can make your life's work exciting and real. And the uh, next page, why the University of Aizu? The UOA, University of Aizu, was is established in 1993 as the first university in Japan dedicated to education and research in computer science and engineering. From the start, it was it has been a very unique university because 40% 40, 40 of the faculty members are non-Japanese from the different countries around the world. Everything on campus is bilingual and you can take all the classes for your degree entirely in English. And here is the future of the University of Aizu. First, I will explain about the safe and interesting. Um, and um, here, here is uh, like a castle that we call the Tsuruga Castle. It's a big one and a lake. And you, if you come to Japan, you can ski, snowboarding. It's beautiful season. You can see beautiful season. Okay. And it is located in the historical city of Aizu Wakamatsu. And uh, it is a safe place to live and very beautiful place. There are four seasons that you can see, spring with the cherry blossoms in front of the castle, summer with the fourth largest lake in Japan, the autumn leaves and enjoyable skiing in winter. And uh, here is some food. Like uh, maybe you know ramen, uh, sake, something like that. So Aizu Wakamatsu is a uh, nik samurai city. There is a rich history, delicious food, interesting cultural traditions, festivals, and so on. As the most famous festival, you can see a parade of the people dressed in samurai clothing. The dance, yeah, samurai clothing. Same riding, uh, some riding on horses down the main street of the city. It's a very tra Japanese traditional. And the uh, next page is um, um, I gonna explain about the advanced. And also, we are young university city. We are already high ranked out of more than one. 1,500 uh, university considered by the British Educational Magazine Times Higher Education. In their 2023 World University ranked, we ranked 24th among, among the 271 Japanese universities appeared in the ranking. In the computer science field, we ranked 7th in Japan and 301 to 400 in the world. And although we are a small university, we have the largest computer science department in Japan, many advanced field like. So our university is a little bit small, but you can study computer science high, like, like a high level. And the next page, we have an advanced curriculum based on the ACM and IEEECS computer science curriculum. After taking fundamental courses in the first and the second year, students choose specialized fields for their third and fourth years. We have five fields. So computer science, computer system, computer network system, and uh, applied information technologies and software engineering. So five fields. And from the third year, you can choose a lab to start research with, a prof, uh, with the supervisor. And the next, and uh, the running environment is high tech. There are around 3000 computers on campus. Machines are really replaced four or five years. The student faculty ratio at UOA is 10 to one, which is much better than we Japanese average of 20 to one. 
so students have good access to professors. You can get much support in study and life from our professors. And there is a lot of cutting edge research being done in our university. Robotics and space are a big topic here. So you can see the space explanation, robotics, AI, something like that. So you can learn a lot of things in our university. And here is, we also have advanced program to help you experience much more outside of normal classes. Things such as the various classes projects, venture, startup factories, special program instruction for competitions, and many other things help you improve skill and add your knowledge. So you can see some picture cross project. And next is up. So I gotta explain about the global. So very few Japanese university have a program that are uh, taught entirely in English. And uh, you are also giving classes in uh, Japanese languages at various level, which is usual, usual for daily life and also beneficial for your future employment after graduation. So if you don't understand, if you do not, if you cannot speak Japanese, but you can come here and you can learn Japanese. So it's no problem. In our short history, we have had a normal agreement with about 100 partner university and institution in many countries around the world. Not only do we send students to the overseas university, but also faculty members collaborate with our university education and research. We also have a special program for doing combined bachelor and master degree in five years instead of six. And here is a global education program, like a non-degree or research student program, two plus two program, and a dual degree program, one to uh, one plus one program, a master degree, a global three plus two program. Like we, anyway, like uh, we have some program that I wanna show you. And our uh, next page is a global events, internship events. Many of our students, both Japanese and international, go on internship in company around the world. We have our own office in Silicon Valley, USA, where some students visit every year. So, and uh, the next, I'm gonna explain about the cost effective. And we are very cost effective university. Our tuition is much cheaper than many universities around the world. It is less, uh, and the cost of living is very reasonable. And so many students have received scholarship from the government and various associations. And here is the fees. And so maybe, you, so you can see tuition and living a year. And uh, here is uh, some scholarships, next on a scholarship, Rotary Yoneyama scholarship, Saiso scholarship. And the uh, next page. And so we provide rich support to inter student. So class mentor system and the body program. So body program is Japanese student become your bodies to help you. So when you come to Japan, you don't know anything. So Japanese student help you. So you don't have to worry it. And uh, um, the bus carrier support. 
And uh, next here is uh, campus life. We have beautiful campus and good facility, including on campus, dormitory and the cafeteria, gym room, and the swim, swim pool. And how to apply for undergraduate. So we invite you to apply for admission to the UOA. We know you won't be disappointed. This slide shows some details about how to apply. You can also check the university website. So here is a QR code and application guideline for 2024 will be uploaded around the end of July, I hope. So if you have any questions, please free to contact us by email at the address at the bottom of the slide. So important date is application period is February, March, 2024. And the enrollment date is October 1st, 2024. So 2024 um, application guideline Upload will upload around the end of July, so please check it out, and um, so you can check requirement documents. So prepare by yourself application form, certificate of English proficiency, like a TOEFL, TOEIC, IELTS, something like that, and a certificate of academic score like a IB, ACT, A level, EJU, AP and the statement of financial support and proof of assist and the passport or residence card. And you have to, you need so also issued by your school, uh, school transcript, certificate of expected graduation and a letter of recommendation. So if you have, if you have any questions, please contact sgu-admission at MacU uizu.ac.jp. So, um, thank you so much for attending the fair. This is here is a QR code for the University of Aizu. Please try to visit the website. If you have any other question, please contact us. This email. And uh, finally, uh, the last one is a uh, please. I will show you new PR video. Okay. I chose the University of Aizu for two reasons. The lab I am currently in has research interests that align with mine, and the sensei that I was able to meet before moving to Japan was very friendly and made a great impression. So I originally came from a large school in the US, and coming to Aizu with much smaller class sizes and more intimate relationships with professors has been very invaluable for many reasons. Getting to take classes that are conducted in English helped me a lot as a native speaker, but that said, I make every effort to improve my Japanese while at the University of Aizu. Uh, I had to participate in uh, uh, World Robot Summit, uh, and uh, our lab won third place in the Disaster Response Challenge. So it was a really, really good experience for me, uh, and I'm really happy about that. Uh, my supervisor gave me uh, uh, really good support, and I, uh, I could uh, publish uh, like many many research papers and participate to uh, many conferences. Uh, it was good experience. I'm working on uh, 
developing reliable brain-inspired computing architectures, targeting uh, critical applications like uh, in prosthetics, like this one behind me, and uh, in aerospace uh, technologies. What has impressed me really on, uh, in this area is because uh, of the excellent supervision I have been able to garner from my professor which has really helped me realize my potential within the shortest possible time. I think this university has one of the best computer environments and its strong overseas network will give me an opportunity to build my various academic strengths and also broaden my professional opportunities and gain give me an international perspective of this ever-growing tech world. And this university also has helped me to polish my social and communication skills and utilize my leadership skills and tackle some very important issues with the right attitude and approach. So around 40% of University of Aizu faculty are non-Japanese and this fact makes uh, it possible to really communicate well in English throughout the university. Being in a multicultural environment really provides uh, perspective. Perspective on other people's culture, on other people's thinking, and I think uh, people could benefit from being in a multicultural environment. Globalization means being able to communicate effectively across cultures and being technologically advanced enough to compete on a par with cutting-edge universities around the world. Advance! Okay. So I finished my presentation, so thanks for watching. And if you have any other questions, so please send me email. I will send you, I will answer you. Okay, thank you. Thank you, uh, thank you Ms. Uh, Igashiwa-san for a wonderful presentation. It was very comprehensive and you have covered all the details very clearly. And the video of the IUC University was also very mesmerizing. I'm sure students are highly motivated. Uh, let's move on to the Q&A session. Uh, can I pick a few questions from the Q&A portal? Uh, is it all right if I pick a few questions from the Q&A portal? Yes, uh, yes, I, I got uh, some questions. Yes, uh, okay. So a student wants to know if there is any minimum act score. Oh, there is no, there is no minimum scores. Okay. So you can send any scores. Anyway. Okay, okay. Yes, yes. there's Good no scores. Uh, okay, thank you. And also, can you please stop sharing your screen, Ms. Igarashi? Oh, the questions? No, no. Uh, can you please stop sharing your screen? Oh, okay. Okay, okay. Hold on, please. Yes, uh, it looks nice now. Thank you. And also, are there any entrance exams uh, to get admission into the university? Um, like, uh, so you have, you need to, you need, uh, maybe like EJU test, like, uh, you need academic scores, like uh, EJU test, ACT, mm -hmm. AP, so, okay. and uh, of course, to TOEIC test, TOEFL test. Okay, yeah. so these are the general tests which we students have to take, but from the university, there are no subject tech tests, right? Um, you... Oh, that's a good point, I think. Yeah, and uh, you have to submit math. Okay. And a science. Okay, okay. So maths and science scores. Yes. Okay. Mm. Uh, thank you. Okay, so and... actually I got a lot of questions, uh, questions from students. So I will, I will send you later. Yeah. Oh, Thank yes, you. yes, sure. So you can take your time and answer in the chat box. It yeah, will be great. I need yes. time. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you once again for joining us today and for presenting about ISO University. Thank you. Thank you for today. Yes, thank you. And let's move on to the next presentation. Uh, let me share the screen. So we are done with the University of ISO. And next, let's proceed with the International University of Japan. 
The International University of Japan, IOJ, is a graduate school which is located in the Niigata Prefecture. It established in 1982 and offers all the courses in English uh, with around 360 students from over 60 countries and regions and about, uh, about 4,300 alumni. Uh, IUJ provides master's and doctoral programs in international relations, international development, and international management, and so on. So in order to provide more details about IUJ University, I invite Ms. Rashi Gupta uh, to, provide, to give us an overview of the admission process into the university. Okay, thank you so much, Faiz Navisang. Okay, so I'm gonna share a uh, good afternoon, everybody. Um, it's quite cold and raining outside. <laughs> But I hope, yeah, um, uh, sharing, um, I want to love to share experience about International University of uh, Japan. So everybody who are interested in MBA or Master of Arts kind of courses can uh, definitely uh, try to apply. Okay, is, I hope my uh, screen is uh, visible. Uh, yes, it is. Okay, thank you. So today, uh, like yeah, what Vaishnavi San was saying um, about IUJ, I will go into details about uh, the overview the programs, career support, admissions, scholarship, question and answer, and a small promotion, uh, promotional video. Okay, so yes, it is um, established in 1982, and it only consists of two uh, graduate schools, so that we don't have any undergraduate. We are more focusing on graduate schools. It consists of two, Graduate School of International Relations and Graduate School of International Management. Yes, it is a small, a very small university, uh, and we welcome around 200 students uh, every year. So, um, yeah, because the first, there's going to be a first year and second year. So, yeah, total around 360 to 400 students in uh, on the campus. Okay, here, here's the, um, the picture from the main gate. You can see here, it's um, uh, surrounded by greenery. It's very lush forest and mountains. We have a uh, one uh, nearest mountain that is Hakai Sang. Uh, this is the one, the the picture in the summer. As yes, and all our classes are taught in English, uh, so you don't need any um, Japanese uh, proficiency. Um, it is uh, not compulsory, but it can be a benefit, an advantage for you if you want to more uh, comfortably live in Japan. Yeah, definitely, it is. Um, better to have or master Japanese language, but not in um, the, uh, the campus. And it's a highly international university with student comings from 50, 60 countries globally. And it's located in a beautiful rural environment. Yes, um, it is basically in a place called Pre Nigata Prefecture, which is common or famous as it's snow and it's called snow country. So I showed you the picture that is in the summer. Now I'll show you how it turns in the winter. Okay, so you can see here, this is the same place. The main gate, the entrance of the building, it's all covered in snow. So if you love to uh, see snow, you love uh, ski, snowboarding, and you want to try it, definitely this is the place. Okay, so now I'm gonna explain about the location. It is in the, it's not in Tokyo. It's a little bit in the Northern part here in a prefecture called Niigata. And it is, you can reach it by uh, Shinkansen or bullet train 90 minutes from Tokyo or 40 minutes from Niigata city. Or usually I travel there um, by bus. So I don't want to go to the bullet trains. It's also kind of costly. So a very cost effective is um, traveling by bus everywhere towards Japan. And you'll see the beautiful scenery. Okay, so this is IOJ campus. Um, here, everything is on campus. So you really cut, cost, uh, uh, cut costing in uh, uh, transportation. Basically, we have a special shuttle that um, takes us around the town, also um, picks up up in the uh, station. So it is all provided by the university. Um, here is the main, main building, like I, I showed you in the start. This is the trees and this is the main building here. This is the um, MLIC, Matsushita Library and Information Center. Um, a very useful um, um, uh, center for learning. Uh, the library is amazing. You'll get so many resources here. And there are um, the IUJ Research Institute, more classes. And there's gonna be a lot of learning um, rooms, learning places that are 24 hours open. And here you can see here, this is the dormitory. 
So we all basically uh, usually live um, on campus. Here's a dorm one, dorm two, and dorm three. And this is for the married apartment. Married um, basically families, bring home families, they can also they stay in campus as well. And here's a faculty residence. So all the support is on campus. Even for leisure and entertainment, there's a gym and the barbecue area, tennis court, and a lot, if you love jogging, you'll definitely um, enjoy this place. Okay, here is the place when, in Sakura Blooms. This is the place, this is the dormitory. Okay, so now we're going to the IUJ programs. Um, like I mentioned before, it consists to uh, Graduate School of um, International Rela Relations, and the second one will be Graduate School of International Management. Here, each uh, GSIR, we call them, has different kind of programs. Here is International Relations Program, our IRP, and the, it's also the year here mentioned, two years, and you'll get obtain a degree in Master Arts of IRP or Political Science. Here's also, um, if you're more having a very strong uh, economics background, then International Development Program, IDP. And this one, you'll get the um, obtain a, a title in international development or economics. And then there's also public management and policy analysis program, PMPP. And this is the how long it is and also the title. And then this is quite a new one, Japan Global Development Program. And here you'll get a different kind of title based on your uh, thesis or your research later on. And here's IPPP, International Public, Public uh, Pro Policy Program. That one is only one year but still you get the Master of International Public Policy. And yes, nowadays, um, recently opened a doctoral course, the PhD program, and these are the clusters. Okay, and here um, about the GSIM, Graduate School of International Management. Yes, the MBA program is there with two years and the degree you'll obtain will be MBA, Master of Business Administration. And if you feel two years too long for you, there is an intensive program, which is one year. And then here again, Japan Global Development Program, two years, and then the Digital Transformation Program, DXP, one year only. And yes, you are able can you can do a cross faculty, like the, um, based on your uh, needs. You want something from uh, GSIM, you can uh, take the subject there. And if you have something, you can also uh, want something interested in uh, GSIR. You can also take the uh, subject from the GSIR. So that is also a cross cross program is also possible. Okay, now why IUJ? So IUJ is unique. Um, it's my sensei, Miyachi sensei said, it's a super international school. Why? Yes, because in Japan, but you only see five to 8% Japanese students. And the, the rest, 90% are students from all over the world. So it's true by its name, International University of Japan. And it has a motto that the world, where the world gathers. So you'll meet people from different kinds of backgrounds, different countries, different language. It's just like a small mini part of the uh, um, a small place for lots of culture, like a mini small melting pot. And then all the subjects are all taught in English. So this is also to prepare uh, you for the global stage. And in your career, if you want to work in a global stage, you are already working with um, living, residing, learning with different people from all over the world and with using English. So it's a very good um, kind of, you know, uh, preparation for you if you want to work in a global kind of environment. And it has highly international standards. And the mission is to educate future global leaders. Why I say future global leaders? Because people who learn in IUJ basically are sent from their country. They are basically, um, they are from the government. We have a lot of tie ups. There are from G to G, U to U, university from university, government from government. So people you live here uh, who are studying here, in the future, there are gonna be um, the leaders of each country. So it's a very good place for doing networking. And if you see yourself, you want to work in an international kind of um, place in the future, all around the world, then this is the place. Yes, to establish your network. And then one more, it's foreign students oriented. So uh, it has a strong financial support. I can say that 100% of students here have somewhat received a scholarship. Meanwhile, 61% have full, full on scholarship 
learning in IUJ. And all of support are provided by day one. Like the faculty is com communicate in English um, and soon seniors, all of you help you settle in and the dormitory prepared for fresh students. And here you enjoy Japanese culture, Japanese um, all without Japanese. Of course you can learn that. That is also very a very good opportunity to learn your Japanese because IUG also provides um, a Japanese uh, classes for the one who are interested from uh, N5 to N1, from the beginners to uh, the advanced, all also are included. Okay, so like I talk about uh, network and social evaluation, um, IUJ has a lot of tie-ups, cooperation with different kind of uh, companies. You can see here, uh, Aeon, Ajinomoto, East Japan Railway Company, Daiking Industries, Meiji, Moss Food, Mitsui, Sumitomo, uh, and small and medium uh, enterprises, uh, and Tohoku Electric Company. And the scholarship itself is not only from the government, but also from foreign and international organizations like IMF, ADB, and there's also JICA, and also public institutions and foundations in Japan. And it is international certified AACSV in the accredited school. And the rank of IUJ is uh, in the top 100 business programs based on economists. Okay, here, you can see here, and the number of students per faculty member. In US, usually one uh, faculty member for uh, 15 students. In UK, one faculty member for 10. In Japan, yeah, 119, 120. But in IUJ, 18. So you'll get exclusive um, support from the faculty member. And then, like I told you, we can have a cross culture, cross kind of uh, program. So the curriculum is adaptable to your needs. So whatever you want to do in your career, it's basically you can choose from the program. Um, and not, not only like that, we always have interactive case discussion and practical classes. Like an MBA, you learn case studies and you discuss and you present. And that is like a common routine. So you get, really get to analyze um, the companies, analyze uh, the organizations in the world, and that really helps you uh, catch up what is happening and how to um, uh, develop yourself. And um, so the required and elective courses for each student's career goal, and there is special guest lecturers, yes, from companies, from other universities, from um, all the expert, and also there's field trips that will be conducted by the university. Okay, diversity of students, like I mentioned, yes, 60%, 60 plus uh, students from all over the country. Used to study and live with students from 60 countries with various backgrounds. This is the Culture Fiesta Festival. And this is an opportunity to develop leadership in a multicultural team. And more than 5,000 alumni network from about 140 countries. Okay, talking about diversity of students, I'm going to touch upon uh, the current students now. From where do they come from? Asia, Europe, Africa, uh, Middle East, uh, Japan, Oceania, Latin America, United States, and the alumni. I myself is an alumni, so you can see the spread of the network from all over the world. Okay, total is like 5,019 alumni, alumni and county from 4, 142 countries and regions. Now, why am I talking about alumni? Alumni, uh, IUJ has a very strong um, alumni uh, throughout the globe. Um, we have um, every annual year meetup and we also keep in touch. For example, if I have a business trip or I'm going to travel to a uh, Africa, there is going to be a, a group of alumni that will always be there, that will always meet up because we're going to, we want to uh, share our network, expand our network. So we keep on helping each other also in, um, in work. So across the alumni network, um, the information for jobs, internships, uh, vacancy is very fast. Okay. And then, yes, career support. I'm touching about that. So after IUJ, then what? 
Okay, so from the day one, um, the career counseling, uh, career support will ask you to please submit your resume. So you're gonna have a one by one meet up with a, a career consultant, counselor, and then they'll talk about what you want to do, what's your career goal, and they'll uh, give you feedback for a better resume. So on the from the first year itself, um, they aim to internship. With the internship, you'll have more network, you'll have more opportunities to go for um, the companies that you are looking for. And then the second year, um, the, the goal is to job hunting, okay? So the activities uh, of the uh, career consul counselor, individual career counseling, your resume reviewing. And then after they review and give you a lot of feedback and they make a really solid, good resume, it'll be um, published in the IOJ resume book. And then it'll be published and distributed during campus recruiting or for the companies that require. And then there are on and on career development seminars on campus and there are alumni career advisors. Okay, so the job employment opportunities. In various fields, you'll get your opportunities of job. Like for example, consulting, finance, manufacturing, ITIT, energy, construction, construction, trading, logistics, and also if you're from IR, international organizations. They have really strong kind of ties with the um, international organizations, for example, UNDP, UNICEF, the World Bank, and then also government, ministries of foreign affairs in various countries and national government offices in various countries. Okay, so here is um, actually a lot of IITians, alumni of IIT, they have been, uh, they studied in IUJ and I just want to share you uh, where are they, they are all um, IUJ alumni. So here they are, this is their program that they took and this is the department from, they came from IIT and now where they work. So for example, here, um, some are Mary Lynch securities, the vice president, okay. And Sumitomo, Forestry India Private Limited Vice President and Director. Here is one of my friends. I'm just going to show you. He's from Architecture and Planning uh, in Roorkee. And he is in Nomura Securities right now as a Vice President. So um, these are all uh, I IITians. Are, you have a lot of kind of benefit as you are all from India. You, um, or you are, your language is English. So that is very much in demand. Uh, if you, um, and also your network in IUJ will be very helpful. Okay, so now I'm going to the uh, 2024 admissions in info. So what is required? Okay, so online application form, your personal statement, a strong research topic, and then English test score. Um, good news for uh, India, you are exempted. You don't have to submit your English test score. And then there is the scan certificates from your undergraduate and graduate schools, if you're already a graduate. Uh, there's a recommender's information. You can uh, get it from your, um, your supervisor from your undergraduate school or your uh, boss or your, super, your manager. And then application fee here, and then GMAT or GRE score or I, IUJ math test uh, for the MBA. But for IR, you, this is not required. Okay, so now about the fees. Okay, so this is the admission fees, uh, the tuition. Yes, you can say here, the two year program is this much. And then the dormitory and then the monthly living expenses. So it seems a big amount, but I don't want you to get uh, worried about this number because IUJ has abundance scholarship that are offered to the students. Like I told you, 100% students have received somewhat scholarship and 61% receive 100%. Okay, so here, there's the types of scholarships, A, B, C, and D. Okay, so it depends on um, how good you make your research, you um, make your personal statement, all of this like online application form, your research topic and all of the certificates. So it will be scanned by uh, um, the school, the IUJ. So, but you can see how much, how many scholarships are offered to the students. Okay, here again, there is 
covers 100%, 90%, 70%, 50%. This is IUJ. ADB from Asian Development Bank, Aon. Jira, Honosuke, Matsuchita, Mitsubishi, Mitsui, and uh, Mext. This is, of course, from the uh, Ministry of Education Japan. So you can see here, each scholarship has their different kind of um, um, uh, um, features. Okay. And please, I want you to note here, uh, to be considered 100% um, considered uh, um, to apply to scholarship, please apply for the first or second intake. The first intake will be January uh, 25th, 2024. Second intake is March 15th. Okay, so that's uh, still some time, you know, to prepare everything the best as you can for your um, application. Okay, sorry, this is a domestic. The international is here. Okay, if you're uh, residing in India, January and February. Okay, so how to apply? Start the application for IUG through IUG online application system. I want you to note this. And then after that, application form. And then you here write if you want to apply for application. Do you need to apply for scholarship to attend IUG? You tick yes. And then IUG scholarship committee. Committee will allocate suitable scholarship to highly qualified non-sponsored successful applicants. Simple as that, okay? So here are the common question and answers. Can I apply without work experience? Yes and no. So there are different, um, basically, uh, if you have any question about this, um, I'll try and um, my uh, Deepika, the counselor will also help you uh, for, the, uh, for application. So please, this is for the IUJ brochure. You can uh, scan here, admission guidelines and also scholarship guidelines. Okay, so this is um, showing a little bit about IUJ. It's breathtakingly beautiful. I can um, assure you that even I, until now I still miss IUJ very much. Okay, here's the dormitory, the barbecue area, the library and the 24 hours a computer room. Okay. You can see here the international festival, barbecue. This is a special kind of uh, festival, naked man festival, where um, these male run in the cold snow. It's like a challenge. And there's also a Japanese presentation. Okay, here are the, it's in the snow country there you can see a lot of uh, snow sports that are also um, conducted by the university. Okay, so for here is the details. For more details, uh, please um, contact Ms. Deepika Sharma. This is her number. And I look forward to receive your application. Okay. Thank you, Ms. Rashi Gupta for the uh, presentation. It was very comprehensive. And let's look into the q and portal. Most of the questions are already answered by Ms. Deepika. That's so but <laughs> we can still pick up like one or two. So mm -hmm. is there any age limit? for uh, getting admission into IUJ? Um, yeah. There's, I think even we had a lot of senior kind of, um, I had some senior classmates like until 50, 56. Mm -hmm. So there's no kind of like, if you are able to follow all the classes and all able to uh, complete uh, your thesis and research, do it without mm -hmm. any problems. And I think it's okay. Okay. Uh, so even for the scholarships, they're eligible for the scholarships as well. Okay, um, there is no age limit, but it uh, depends on each um, scholarship provider. So I have to look upon that because we have a lot of um, scholarships provider here. So I have yes, to go yes, by yes. one by one. Yeah. Yes, I understand. Thank you. And and the admission is only through GMAT, right? Because some of the, uh, many universities uh, offer their MBA programs through GMAT and GRE. But in IUJ, it is only through GMAT. Yes, yes. And for the second intake, if you don't, you cannot have GMAT, IUJ has their own IUJ math test, which you can apply. Yes. So, um, yeah, if you don't have a GMAT, then you'll have an IUJ math test for the second intake. Okay, okay. Thank you. And, yes. And, and for the JSIR, you do not need any GMAT and you don't even need any TOEFL. You don't need IELTS also <laughs> or TOEIC. Yes, yes. So that is a big advantage for Indian um, students. Yes, yes. I hope students would grab this opportunity. Yes, definitely. Um, mm -hmm. Are there also scholarships provided from the university other than yes. the common scholarships? Yes, okay. it's called Nakayama. 
So okay, okay. it's provided from the IUJ. So apart from that, yeah, we also provide the scholarship. And if, for example, you uh, didn't from the start, you um, apply for the scholarship, but you did not get 100 percent. It's OK. Mm -hmm. In the um, when you enroll the first day, you there are all other kind of scholarship uh, scholarships that are um, available for the students. OK, like Rotary. Mm -hmm. Yes, nice. That's wonderful. Mm -hmm. And also, is there any background requirement? For example, uh, if a student wants to pursue graduate studies in economics or in political science and they have an engineering background, it's still all right, right? Yes, it's still all right. Because mm -hmm. for the economics, like uh, international development program, there's going to be like in the start, they're going to like review all of the economic theories, mm -hmm. micro, macro, everything, even the math, the basic math, mm -hmm. they will guide you one by one. So you'll understand um, each kind of topic subject clearly. So that mm -hmm. will be fair. Mm -hmm. Yes. Mm -hmm. uh, so as per the timeline, we have three timelines for the Indian students in January, August and June, if I remember correctly. Okay. Yes, let me just see, Vishnu uh, Let me just check one more time. It, uh, yes. So I am sharing again. Wait, just a brief sharing. Okay, so here, this is, um, I think, has to be noted. This is for the international, uh, in, including mm -hmm. Indian students, uh, mm -hmm. January 25th, February 13th, and March 21st. Okay. The faster, the earlier you um, apply, the higher um, chances for you to get the full scholarship. Mm -hmm. Okay, that's great. Thank you. Mm -hmm. And is the admission on the rolling basis? For example, the student did not get an admission in the first intake. So will he be considered for the second and third intakes or does he have to apply separately? Okay, um, I think Deepika Sang. Deepika? She will explain about, she's more about the admission. Yeah, thing. She will, yeah she will uh, definitely share. Deepika? Okay, um, that okay. will I'll note okay. that fish now. Yes, yes, that's no problem. If, if you uh, contact Dibi Kizansi, will uh, help you throughout each in process. Even like in the mm -hmm. first intake, you are not accepted, then what will you have to do? What you have to brush up? Then it will be also helped. Yes, yes, yes. Thank you, Ms. Rashi. I think we have covered almost all the questions and Ms. Deepika also have answered many of the questions. Thank you once again for joining us today. Uh, we hope to look for like we look forward to joining. <laughs> you. Okay, thank you, Vishnavi Uh Yes, so let's move on to the next presentation. Let me share the agenda slide. So uh, the next presentation is from Nagoya University. Uh, as you know, Nagoya University is one of the top national universities, and it, uh, in Japan, it established in 1871, and it became the last imperial university of Japan in 1939. It offers various fields of study, including humanities, social sciences, natural sciences, engineering, and so on. And it is renowned for its research achievements in physics, chemistry, biology, and has produced about seven Nobel laureates in science as of 2021. So it is committed to internationalization, and the university also offers study abroad programs and English taught courses from students around, all around the world. Uh, for this, now I invite Ms. Masatoshi Maki, uh, to give a presentation and to introduce us about the G30 international program in the university. Uh, you can start your presentation. Oh. I would like to correct. I, uh, we have Ms. Yumiko san from Nagoya University who is going to give us a presentation. I apologize for the uh, error. So you can please start the presentation. Uh, we cannot hear you, Yumiko san. Okay, what about this? <laughs> yes, yes. It's, okay, it's sorry. All right now. <laughs> no, 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 no problem. Okay, so, all right. All right, can you see my, uh, can you see my presentation slide? Yes, 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 I can. All right, thank you so much, Sally, for the trouble. All right, 
Okay, again, thank you so much for giving us this opportunity to introduce our G30 international programs today. My name is Yumiko and I work at the admissions office at Naga Universities. Without further ado, so, um, okay, uh, let's see. Um, Okay, uh, with that further ado, let's get into the into it. I'll cover these topics today. I hope you do find something of interest for you. First off, why Japan? I almost always include this question as an icebreaker. Safe and clean, food is good. But as you are here today, I think many of you guys already know the answers to this question. What about the next question? Why Nagoya? I wish we can hear because Nagoya University is here. Nagoya University is one of the members of the national seven universities, often referred to as the Japanese version of Ivy League institution. And a grad study in Japan has traditionally had many values. The biggest issue has always been the language value. However, recently more Japanese universities are offering full degree programs in English, and we have been doing that since 20, 2011. Okay. Located in the center of Japan on Honshu Island on the Pacific coast, Nagoya is the fourth largest city in the country and one of three major economic regions. The city is known for its manufacturing culture, acting as a hub for both traditional and cutting-edge technologies in industries such as automotive, aerospace, ceramics, machine tools, and materials engineering. With that great need among Japanese companies for skilled workers with international experience, Nagoya University's G30 programs excel in opening doors for our students after graduation. Nagoya has a high score in the affordability category of the best student cities published by QS ranking. While living in Nagoya, students will enjoy a high quality of life with a lower cost of living than Tokyo or Osaka. Nagoya and the surrounding areas offer historical sightseeing spot. Nagoya cuisine is widely and cheaply available. Opening in 2012, uh, 22, last year, Ghibli Park is now one of Japan's top tourist attractions. Now, um, about Nagoya University, since we founded in 1871 as a temporary hospital and a medical school, the university has grown to be one of the top universities in the world and has been known for its free and vigilant school culture. We have a six Nobel laureates since 2000. There are approximately 16,000 students enrolled at the Nagoya University. And we have G30 international programs. The programs are fully taught in English. Aiming to foster high educated individuals, Nagoya University offers offers an alley of undergrad and grad programs in sciences, engineering, and social sciences. All courses are taught in English by Japanese and international faculty members. Students will receive a high quality education at one of Japan's top research universities. Every year, about 15 students enter the G30 undergrad programs. The main subject for our undergrad programs, as you can see here, we have social sciences, humanities, automotive engineering, chemistry, biology, and physics. Now I would like to introduce what makes our, our G30 programs special and unique. First, we are proud of diversity. Our students and the faculty come, um, come from many different countries, so you feel very welcomed when you arrive on our campus. Next is student-centered education. 
The class is often discussion based and very interactive. Our students are very active in contributing to the class. Students learn from each other through discussions and working together in various projects. Um, our class size is all small. Uh, when you enter large American universities, for instance, you may have a hundred of students in your first year classes. G30 has a small class sizes, which means that your professors know your name and you can more easily meet and work with people in your classes. Another key element is the self-motivated learning. In the first fourth year, students in the sciences and engineering do a CSIS project, so you work in a laboratory. Research projects are purely curiosity driven because we believe that at the very root of research is curiosity. We have the best research capability as well, and our students have an opportunity to, to join top notch research groups. Although our enrollees enter different programs, they also study together during the first and the second year. This allows them to expand opportunities for cultural exchange and intellectual stimulation. In the first and the second year, students take the liberal arts education along with the Japanese language courses, common basic courses, and basic courses for specialized, specialized subject. These courses are very structured, well structured. Once students learn basic academics, they can take liberal art courses where they can gain a wide range of knowledge even more deeply. The liberal art education provides a foundation on which students can build knowledge and understanding of the subject. Liberal art courses are rather interdisciplinary. interdisciplinary. Students study both humanities, science, and hard sciences. The idea is that new knowledge only built on prior knowledge. The, li the liberal art education helps students explore unfamiliar concept and prepare for complex issues in the field they measure in. That's why we believe that liberal art education is equally important. There is a good academics, but also important is a social life. Our main campus is located at the heart of Nagoya City with easy access to the downtown areas. Many students join the club and the circle because, that, uh, because that's how you can make friends and uh, make your campus life more, more vibrant. We have uh, more than 100 sport and culture clubs, which include formula team and aviation club. So you really get a lot of chance to really integrate with other, uh, integrate with other students at the university. You also get many opportunities to express, uh, to experience Japanese culture, like calligraphy, for our arrangement and so on. There are millions of opportunities to meet new friends and get together with other students. At the lower light, uh, you can see this picture was uh, taken after the summer water fight competition. The upper light was taken during the information exchange session. When new students arrive on the campus, we will, uh, they will attend a series of orientation sessions. In the information exchange sessions, new students are grouped with senior students who will give you some Bible tips, uh, including how to prepare for a college life. At the lower middle, you will see the sign NUEMI. NUEMI is a project to encourage local students to take English taught classes. Nagoya University also offers D30 classes to non-D30 students. This provides non-G30 and G30 students with opportunities for mutual mu multicultural exchange and mutual, stimu mutual stimulation. 
There are a handful of international student groups, and these are just a few of examples. NUISG is a student-led organization representing Nagoya University's G30 international programs. NUISG continuously aims at creating a comfortable environment for international students at Nagoya University. For the application process, you can look at our, our website, but I wanted to let you know that uh, you can apply online and you don't have to come to Japan. You submit the document, then there is an interview or all other examination, and then the admission offer you are accepted. We have two admission deadlines within the same admission cycles, but you should choose one application window, the first land or second land, and submit all the materials during that time frame. Important to note that, however, uh, there will be no second land for the biological science program, the social sciences program, and the Japan in Asia cultural, cultural studies program. Required application documents are curriculum based. If you go to a local school, a prospective graduation letter, transcript, mark sheet for the class 10 board exams and the secondary school certificate, plus English proficiency scores should be submitted. For more details, please check with our application requirement. SAT and ACTs are accepted as an additional document. We encourage you to include, but it's totally, they are totally optional. Scholarships. So we have a Nagoya University Global 30 undergraduate scholarships and the MEX scholarships. The scholarship application is integrated into the admission process. All applicants are automatically considered as a candidate if you submit the necessary document when you apply to, the, uh, to our programs. Statistically, 50% of our G30 students receive the scholarships. These scholarship opportunities are only available at the time of application. Other financial support include tuition fee waiver programs and private funded scholarships. Tuition waiver can be available from 50% to 100%. You will receive more details when you are admitted. Lastly, career services and career births after graduation. We'd like to emphasize that quite a few students have gone to study at the top, top tiers university around the world for graduate programs. 25% of students stay to go to graduate school at Nagoya University. Another 25% enter graduate schools abroad. And about 50% find jobs in Japan and other countries. We have the Career Support Center to help, uh, to help students navigate the path. You can attend job hunting seminars and career fairs. You can access resources to get familiar with the job hunting process. First hand information on job hunting etiquette, tips, techniques, and strategies will be taught during those seminars. To hear the next destination on academic paths, and another 50% find jobs in Japan and other countries. So our alumni are every, everywhere around the world. So I've just quickly gone through all the materials and I hope some information is useful for you. For any questions or any information on the admissions process, you can always find on our website. Last but not least, uh, one of the current students have sent us a video message. So let's hear what she says. Namaste. Hi everyone, my name is Prerina Lavania and I am from India. 
I am a master's first year student enrolled in the Graduate School of Bioagricultural Sciences at Nagoya University. I came here to pursue my undergraduate studies and over the course of four years I have learned so much and had the great opportunity to make friends with international as well as Japanese people. So I graduated from Nagoya University last year and as an undergraduate I work in the lab of molecular and cellular regulation under the Department of Applied Biosciences in the School of Agricultural Sciences. Since I liked my lab project, I decided to stay and pursue my master's degree here. And uh, to explain in simple words, I am trying to do experiments in order to elucidate the molecular mechanisms that regulate different signaling pathways in human cancer cells. Well, Nagoya is the fourth largest city in Japan and it is the birthplace of one of the largest automotive giants, Toyota, that I hope you guys have heard of. There are plenty of reasons and I can list few of them. First of all, Nagoya University is one of the imperial universities of Japan. Uh, our student population is around 16,000 10% of them are international students. Our campus is wide with lush green spots central library, giant auditorium, but more importantly, we have our own subway station, which makes commuting way more easier. Uh, the lecture rooms, they are well equipped with the latest technology. The teaching faculty, professor are brilliant. And sometimes we have mixed lectures where students like me seize the opportunity to make new Japanese friends. I love snacks and food and though I'm a vegetarian, our campus has plenty dining cafeterias and convenience stores that serve delicious and fulfilling meals. Besides the food, we also have student support faculty that is always available and if you plan to work in Japan, do not fret because the administration office will regularly send you important information about company workshops and internship opportunities. Regarding the clubs, the list is very long and diverse and each of them have their own sets of rules and requirements, so choose wisely. I used to be part of the Japanese archery club and I thoroughly enjoyed learning this martial art from my Japanese seniors. To be honest, being a club member can be taxing. However, we have uh, less intensive versions of clubs that are called circles and they are fun as well. I am going to continue with my studies and eventually obtain a PhD, though where to pursue one is still undecided. Uh, my current plans include applying to a few US universities and then hope for the best. Okay, uh, I'll stop. Uh, I'll stop here. So we have a special guest from Faculty of Informatics. Our G30 international programs don't have the program which specifically focuses on informatics, but the Faculty of Informatics offers daily programs. Fan Sensei, uh, please yeah. take it away. Yes. Can you hear me? Mm -hmm. No problem. Yeah. Good evening and good afternoon, everyone. Um, since it doesn't have much time left, so I just make a quick uh, explanation about of this program. Um, I'm from the Graduate School of Informatics of Nagoya University. Um, here, next line, please. Um, yes. This is the program I'm going to introduce. It's a Japanese government scholarship program, namely international students to the education program for data scientists for the next generation value creation. But nowadays the hot topic is state big data and data scientists. So this is the, the hot topics, the hot program we are providing. Um, this program divided into two parts, that is the master course and also the doctoral course. Next line, please. And the aim, just a, just a quick explanation of, about the aims of the program. Now everyone talks about SDGs and Nagoya University also 
it also aims to contribute to vast solution of the global issues. To achieve this, we need to change the structure of the society with technology such as artificial intelligence and also the human resources who can actually solve problems and create new value. So in this program, um, our students learn the basics of the AI and also to fostering human resources who can solve problems and create new value from a global perspective, regardless of arts and sciences. Next slide, please. And then, so this is the requirements to, to apply for this quest. Um, we have some we have target countries that is Asian uh, AS ASEAN countries and also the Southwest Asian countries, which including India. Okay, so um, need to be under age of thirty five, and we have some academic background, health, language requirements, and also the GPA. Next slide, please. And this is the application procedure. Um, actually, the requirement, the application requirement will be ready um, around November. So um, when, it, when it came out, you need to prepare all the nest, um, no, sorry, you need, to con you need to contact, contact your preferred um, professor first to get an, yeah, to get an okay to apply for, for the program. Then prepare the documents and then send to our office and then we will have a screening and also the interview. Next line, please. This is the scholarship benefits. First, you will get some money um, from the government because it's a scholarship. So, uh, and also you will get a ticket when you fly to Japan and when you fly back to your country. And also you also have um, exempted from the tuition fees. So this is really good. Next slide, please. Yes, I'm doing a very quick in, uh, explanation, introduction of the program. So if you are have interest of this program, you can just check it on our homepage. And also I'm sending my um, email address here. If any questions, just contact me. Thank you very much. Thank you. So that's all from us. Thank you so much for your time. Uh, thank you, Yumiko San and Professor Fang for very delightful presentations and for sharing the details about G30 program and also the Next Generation Data Scientist program. Uh, the insights are really, they'll be very helpful to the students. Uh, let's proceed with the Q&A session. Um, so most of the questions are already answered. Uh, like, a student wants to know if there is any uh, exemption for the application, university ad application fee. Yes, tuition waiver programs, you mean? Yes, um, we have a yeah, tuition waiver program. So you can apply it every, actually every year. So if you get accepted, you are selected. So 50% um, to 100% of tuition waivers are available. Okay, thank you. Uh, Miss, uh, Miss Yumiko-san, since you are in the admissions team and admissions counselor, so you would know what kind of students would get admission. So based on that, do you have any suggestions for the students? Like, should they focus on extracurriculars or on the CGPA? Uh, any suggestions you would like to give? Um, it's a really hard question. So we received a tons of applications. So we don't have a, like a specific focus. So when we review the application document, so um, but the interview is very important. So um, as I mentioned, like shortlisted applicants are, in, are invited for the interview. So you sh the when you perform really well during the interview, so I think you will be, be, be accepted. So yeah, just well prepared. So academically and uh, maybe mentally for the college life. Okay, thank you. Thank you, Miss uh, Yumiko-san. And there's a student who wants to know uh, some of the undergraduate programs is about only for three years in India. So are they, are they also eligible to apply? Um, it should be how many years for the three um, years of second, secondary, secondary, I mean, the, the requirements, we need 18, 16 years, which years. means six years for primary school and then six years for secondary means the, um, yeah, you, you mean junior and the and high school and then four years for the university, totally 16 years. So 
how how many uh, in the secondary part so he has he or she has 15 years of education 15 15 is not enough need to be 16 yes i see okay because in some of the courses undergraduate or bachelor's program courses some universities offer three years of program so oh i see yes. so um you can say I mean, I cannot answer it very detailed here. You can send me all your CV, your bio to me, yes. and I will check it for you. Yes. Yes, yes. Thank you, Professor. And there is someone who wants to know about postdoc opportunities. So do you have any idea about it? Postdoctoral opportunities. Postdoctoral, <laughs> yes. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, it kind I... of depends. Yeah, I think I would say. So it's a really hard to know like uh, what kind of opportunities we have uh, to offer. So, but if you are interested in like environmental sciences, mm -hmm. I think it uh, might be the good idea to directly contact the Graduate School of Environmental Studies at Nagoya Universities. Okay. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yes, thank you, Miss. Uh, and let's take one last question. So are there any interdisciplinary courses, like for example, IT and economics? Mm. Yes. Uh, are there any interdisciplinary courses offered, uh, for example, IT and economics? Yes, actually, um, in in our graduate school, you need to contact the, the preferred professor you want to apply, and then yes, that that all, if that professor okay for your application, then you will learn what you have you want to learn. This is okay. the, the, the this is different for the for the bachelor because the graduate school part is to like our self way yeah yes yes thank you um uh, thank you miss fang professor fang and also miss yumiko san for uh, joining us today and for clearing all the questions uh, we can end the presentation now thank you very thank much you once again thank for... you so much yes. so if there are any details uh, which students have to note please post them in the chat box uh, so this brings us almost to the uh, end of the webinar. I thank everyone of you for your unwavering attention. And I would also like to express my uh, gratitude and appreciation to all the presenters and panelists for their contributions today. And a special thank you to all the participants who joined us today and your active engagement and participation have made this webinar a success. Uh, we hope the information provided has been insightful and will help you make uh, an informed decision regarding studying and working in Japan. So thank you all once again for your presence and valuable contribution. We can end the webinar here and wish you all the best in your academic and professional pursuits. Uh, in order to stay uh, tuned to the future upcoming webinars, you can scan the following QR code and... Um, Excuse me a second. Yes, yeah, so you can you can scan the following QR code for the upcoming webinars and and stay tuned to the webinar. Thank you. Oh. Thank you.